my name's McKenna. I had my first closing at 32 days into getting licensed. I'm with EXP and I'm about to tell you why it was literally the worst business decision that I could have ever made. <laughs> like literally the worst. Um, but why I'm really glad I did it. So keep watching. I am in DFW. I am a realtor. This is Ozzy. This is a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. This is Aria. She's a Chihuahua Jack Russell mix, um, but mostly identifies as a potato. And I live underneath a flight path. So if you hear some airplanes, sorry, that's just how it be. <laughs> All right, so I'm about to tell you how I got my first deal within 32 days of being licensed, um, why it was literally one of the worst business decisions that I, as a small business owner, could make and taking on these clients and doing all of the things, how I essentially like lost money <laughs> by, but like, honestly, why I'm really glad I did it. Why, even though it was the worst decision business wise, I'm just really glad I did it. So anyway, I have notes. Y'all, I have notes. <laughs> Y'all, calm down. No. Really? You wanna sit? Can we just chill? Come here. You good, fam? Got licensed in May, ended up joining EXP, have a great mentor, I have a great team. I was doing all of the real estate activities, uh, all the lead generating, all of the advertising that I was doing, I was creating ads, I was running them on Facebook and YouTube. I had my Yelp ad going, I was sponsored on, on Yelp. Um, wearing my name tag literally everywhere I went, creating stories and content, filming new construction. I was just, I was just doing a lot of stuff, okay guys? Um, and even though I was a month or not even a month into the business, I was getting a little bit frustrated because I'm like, oh, I just want it out. Like, you know what I mean? Like. You work so hard and you do all the testing and you become a real estate agent and then it's like, now you must boom. And it's like, when you become a real estate agent, they tell you to work your sphere. Well, my sphere is not here, guys. I'm in Texas, my family's in Ohio, my husband was military, so we got everybody from all over the place. Um, but I don't really know anyone here in Texas. So I was working in an area where largely real estate agents, it's, it's, it is an expertise and a popularity game. And I'm already working in an area where there are literally 22,000 real estate agents. And everyone's just gonna lick themselves right now. Really? Really? Stop. Ew. Like, no one wants to hear that right now. Chill out. Just chill out. Chill out. We gotta be cool, man. We gotta be cool. We're on YouTube. We gotta be cool. I did all of the activities and I wasn't seeing that instant gratification, which you're never gonna see, but like, one thing to say it and understand it, and one thing to actually like do it, guys, okay? So I decided at that point that I was going to join um, OpCity. If you don't know what OpCity is, OpCity is basically like a referral business that you know capt call captures on real realtor.com and Zillow. So when people are you know searching all those sites saying like I'm gonna do it myself, <laughs> and they're actually just falling upon things that are inaccurate properties that are already under contract, properties that are already sold. You know, they're getting all excited to click here to find out more about the property. So they click there All an op city, grab that number. It shoots out general area, general budget and general time frame. which I'll do a whole video on op city because I have some things to say about it, good and bad. So I can share that all with you. But so basically it's just speed to lead. So, so I signed up for that on June 15th because I was like, heck yes, like, they take a 35% commission fee, but I was like, that is super steep. But at the end of the day, if I'm paying a 35% commission fee, it's better than like me not making any money at all. Help me gain experience, get the reviews and like work my way up, okay? So on this particular day, I had gotten the little that sounds nothing like that. And I uh, clicked it and I won. I was really proud of myself. I won in Hop City. And their time frame was less than 90 days. 
cool, no big deal. I can totally do that. There's plenty of leases that are in that area. So I get this person on the phone. Names are super hard to pronounce. To this day, I still can't even do it right and they kind of laugh at me, but it is what it is, okay? They're from Eastern Europe, super heavy accents. And this is when I'm going to grab my notes because this goes fast, okay? June 15th, stay with me. And they're saying, yes, that's what I want and we need to see things as soon as possible. Great. And they had mentioned something about something today, which like I said, very hard to understand their accents. So I understood that as actually seeing properties today. Um, so I arranged for a babysitter. I sent them five text messages and not five as in like a lot, but like I kind of am one of those people that I won't send you like one really long text. I'll just kind of set, send it segmented because it's just better organization. At least that's how my mind works. So I sent them the five text messages and then like three hours went by and I never, they never opened the portal. They didn't call me. They're not answering any of my texts. And then I called them twice back to back. So people will just uh, automatically like reject it because they're afraid that I'm a scammer. And I'm like, no, I'm your real estate agent. So I just called back to back. Um, and then I left a voicemail saying, you know, no, if, if it's really urgent that you want to see these a home today, you need to tell me which ones you want to see. Um, and then what time you can start. Like I'm ready to go when you are. Uh, at that point, a couple hours later, I got a phone call back and they said, oh, well, we're actually out of town. We live in Lubbock. We were in town, but now we're back in Lubbock uh, and we need to look at more properties when we come back into town. <sighs> Sounds very confusing because it was. Um, said, I'm gonna send you a search alert. Go ahead and favorite the ones you want to see. We'll schedule them out. We'll go and see them. It's gonna be great. We're gonna find you a place. Mm -hmm. Okay. On June 21st, I never heard anything from them from the 15th to the 21st. So I said, I'm like, okay, it's off city. They gave me somebody that really didn't want my help that just wanted to know one, about one particular property. So I'm just going to let this little fishy go. But then on June 22nd, um, I sent my last text just saying like, Hey, let me know if you want to see anything. Just very open ended. Um, that was at 9am. They responded by 1030 and said they wanted to see homes that day from two o'clock PM to five o'clock PM. And they needed to do that in those time frames because at one o'clock they had an appointment in Fort Worth and at six o'clock they had an appointment in Fort Worth. Okay. So I scheduled from two to five. I took them to seven properties. I had nine scheduled because they said they had to decide that day. So typically I won't show any more than five to seven, but because they had to decide that day and they wanted to see all nine, I scheduled all nine. Um, so I showed them all the properties. It's hot, it's sweaty. I'm doing all the work. I'm giving them the MLS flyers that are all highlighted, like trying to just be boom, 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 boom. Last one, I sit everything on the table. They pick which one's their favorite. They decide that the last house that they had seen for the day, they're gonna do an application. Great, let's do it. And then they're like, well, actually we have one more appointment. And I was like, okay. They're like, yeah, we have one more house to see. I said, we don't have any more houses to see. I'm done. Like, this is all you have to choose from. They said no with another real estate agent. Y'all. <laughs> don't do that. Real estate agents do not get paid unless you sign a buy a house with them, sell a house with them, or sign a lease with them. They do not get paid. Their babysitter is not paid. Their mileage is not paid. Their time is not reimbursed. So by you picking and choosing like five or six different agents, y'all just playing us and wasting our time and money. Like how would you feel if you did all your work for your job and then at the end of the week, your boss was like, just kidding. I had this guy do all the same tasks as you and I decided I'm gonna pay him. Don't do it. So I was really mad. Um, but in front of them, I wanted to keep my composure, but I was like livid. I ended up calling my husband on the way home. I was so upset. I literally could cry because I had been giving so much to these people and they were just going to play the field. So I gave them a call. They didn't answer. I left a voicemail and I basically said what I said. I said, you know, this, this house home that you were going to see of the day, I could have shown you that home. Um, and I told them all the things I just told you. So, so they ended up though that they had seen the last house. They didn't like it. So they wanted to do the application with me. We they did the application on Wednesday, didn't have all the documents turned in. So on Thursday, they had to uh, do more or send in their driver's licenses. And so Thursday it was finished. And then on the 26th, they called me and said, we have to know about the status of our application. And I said, well, it was just done yesterday. They said, yes, but we are going to be homeless on July 1st. It's the 26th, y'all. 
I had gotten a phone call from them like days prior and they didn't actually engage with me until like a few days before this. And I was like up their butt trying to get things done, but they, like, they just didn't understand. I feel like I was conveying it, but they just didn't understand. Goodbye, Ozzy. Go live your best life, man. I ended up calling the listing agent of that last property. They said, we're, we're not gonna go no for three to five days. We won't know till Monday. So I ended up calling my clients back and saying like, guys, you might not know till Monday. If you were gonna be homeless, you need to apply for other homes. These are the ones you liked and these are for the reasons why. Um, and that was like at seven o'clock at night on Friday. And they said they were gonna be in town and I said, you need to let me know so that I can do all the things for you. I can go tour these houses by myself because they're down in Lubbock. They're like three hours away. It might've been more, I don't really know. I'm new to Texas, y'all, don't judge me. But they're really far away. So I was like, I can go tour these homes, send you a video, it'll be great. Um, they said they're gonna go ahead, they're gonna look through, they're gonna favorite it, they're gonna let me know. I stayed up till midnight with my computer on my lap and I never, I never received anything. So finally, I had appointments all the next day, showings, tours, consultations with new builds. So I just went to bed, got up the next morning, I went and did my whole slew of things I had to do for the day, came home at 4 p.m., opened up my laptop and saw an email from them at like 12.30 the night before. And then that's when I called them and they said that they had applied for another house with another realtor because I did not get back to them. So I was expecting you to text me like last night. And if it's something that's this urgent that you need me to send you applications so we can do something, like you need to text me because I'm with other clients. I'm not gonna ditch my clients and be like scanning my email every five seconds when I'm actively working with them. So if it's something that's urgent, you call me or you text me, you don't send me emails. Like I'm, that is not the most urgent platform in which to reach me. You know what I mean? That doesn't really convey urgency. So he apologized, getting overwhelmed, you need to find a home for your family. They have four children. Um, I was like, you need to look out for number one, I get it, but also recognize how much I am doing for you. And then if my name is not on the application, then I'm spending money to work with you and I, I don't even get paid. And they said, oh yes, we understand. So, the second time that happened, by the way. And on Saturday night, I ended up, they sent, I, I went to homes, I filmed some, sent them to them and they were very concerned about the homes because the school districts weren't very great, which at this point you're going to be homeless in like three days. So I'm basically just trying to find a home that's big enough. Um, and if the ratings are a six out of 10 versus a 10 out of 10, I do not know that I'm not checking that. So you need to like, like you're going to be homeless. Like what is most important? And by the way, they homeschool. It, it doesn't make sense to me either, but I'm just trying to get them placed as soon as possible. Ended up finding a property, they loved it. Everything was brand new on the inside, it was the perfect size, it was in the Keller ISD, it was everything that they wanted. Um, it had been on the market for like a day and a half and I said, do your application now. Called the listing agent, told them of the urgency of the situation, uh, turned in all of this stuff. I mean, <sighs> y'all. <laughs> The criteria was very steep. If you looked at all the bank statements, they had you know, an Etsy shop, his income, his bonuses and commissions, and then they also had like this online bookstore. That if you look at all the numbers at face value, the numbers work, okay? Well, apparently the listing agent used to be an accountant and he pulled on everything and scrutinized it and found out that the business was losing money, Etsy doesn't do enough to even do anything except for just be a fun, expensive hobby and um, his income and his commissions alone were not going to be three to three and a half times um, what the monthly rent was. So at which point I knew that we were running out of time. <laughs> it was already Sunday. They were getting, they were gonna be done with their house. So they told me on Wednesday. So I ended up arranging, I was like, well, can they do a co-signer? Yes, they can do a co-signer. So we went through. They found someone, I guess, that they trust that also speaks very little English, ended up getting them as a co-signer. And then guys, it was literally like 12 hours of me just like harassing the crap out of these people, trying to get everybody to turn in their documentation. Did you sign this? No, we need to do this. I would like not hear from somebody for like three hours and I would end up calling them and they're like, well, we're having a family dinner. I don't care. <laughs> like, I don't care that you're having a family. Like stop, There's, that's what a microwave is for. This is taking precedence, y'all we need to move. I had been talking to the listing agent. I had been putting the light underneath his butt. 
Um, so you cannot wait on these, this documentation. Going back and forth, the listing agent is literally to like talking about my grumpy clients, his head is spinning, like when can this stop? I was like, don't be so dramatic. I was like, you're not even in this side, bruh. If you wanna compare notes, let's compare notes. Took forever to get the coast because I would get like one email from this person, but then this other person wouldn't fill out their stuff. So it's just like, it was just like constant back and forth battles. Then the listing agent calls me and says, I am sending out the fee, the invoice for them to pay for their applications. Cause they sent their applications in, they, they go through the criteria, then they pay their fee then they get approved. Then they sign the documents. Then you get all the things until you eventually get the keys. Well, the listing agent tells me there's going to be two other applications. So we're gonna have three total. I'm sending them their invoices. They need to pay immediately. Whoever pays their fees immediately, whoever gets approved first, whoever then signs the documents first, whoever then drops off the security deposit in first month's rent physically in person is the person that's going to get the house. So in my mind, I'm, I'm imagining like racing down the highway, trying to like beat out another real estate agent. And I'm like sweating at this point. I call my clients and they're driving and I say, you need to go on and you need to pay your invoices. And I said, but we're driving. We'll do it when we get there. No, homie, you stop. You put on your hazards, you pull off the side of the interstate and you pay. Then he says, well, can I pay all three? Because he wanted to pay for his, his wife and their co-signers. And I said, no. I said, everyone pay their individual fee and then you can go back after the fact and you can Venmo, Cash App, whatever you want to do to make it right. But like, I'm not asking that of the, real, the listing agent, but we are already causing so much issue. Like, I, like there's so many red flags with this. So let's just keep going. So everybody pays their invoices. Great, wonderful. I'm feeling very relieved. We're in the running, we're good, until I get a phone call from the listing agent who says, why are the, your clients 120 days past their credit card and not paying any anything on it? I think I'm not seeing any balance. And then they also said that they had an outstanding balance with their um, previous landlord, at which I called my client and I said, what the heck is going on with this? And he goes, I have no idea about the credit, um, but apparently like his children had drawn on the wooden fence, like the privacy fence. Ozzy, like sniffing the candle, come here. Um, had drawn on the privacy fence with um, chalk and they charged them the full amount of the $1,400 deposit. And then they wanted additional money for the fence. I, I don't know guys, I don't know. It sounds like chalk from concrete. I don't know if that would cause that much damage. I conveyed that to them, I said, I can't, I can't tell you, but they, the, the landlord wants more and they don't want to pay it. So that's why there's an outstanding balance. And then it was just silence. Nobody says anything. I arranged with my clients to meet them at the house because they had never seen the property. They had driven all day. I go there with my daughter. We're waiting for 45 minutes inside of this hot house. It has no um, air turned on right now. And it's Texas. It's like 110 degrees in there. I'm sweating. My daughter's sweating. They pull up in their van with all of their things, guys. All of their things. They had moved out of their apartment. They were homeless. <laughs> And so I'm standing in the doorway because I'm not feeling good about this application. I'm not feeling good at all. <laughs> but we were running out of time. It was bad. So I had made up my mind that I was gonna be a smart businesswoman. And it made me sick because I was like literally gonna cry. But I had to hold it get together. I'm like, you, in my mind, I'm like, I'm gonna tell them they either need to go into an extended stay and buy a home, go into an extended stay, and we need to widen our search and keep looking for a lease. Or like, I was gonna have to fire them. Because at this point, I had been working tirelessly for them. But like, I couldn't do it anymore. Um, so they all come in the house, and I know I have to have this conversation with them. The wife is literally like white, like clammy white. You could tell like everybody's really stressed out. The kids are very, very quiet. They all kind of like, oh, this is my room, this is my room. And I'm like, ugh, <laughs> this is horrible. Like they're looking at this house that they really love and I'm probably not gonna be able to get it for them. And I was like, is this good? Is this the kind of thing you want? Like I'm phrasing things that way. You know what I mean? Like, oh, this is the kind of stuff you want. This is, oh, this is important to you. Okay, yeah, this is, this is good for me to know. And we're in um, the parents, what would be the parents' bedrooms and my phone goes off basically like the heavens opened up and the sun came down and Jesus spoke through this listening agent to me all and 
like I said, I know y'all have been working really diligently. I know how important this property is to these people and the situation that they currently are in. You have done all the things. They're approved. Um, but they have to docu sign all the documents and we have to uh, get the checks, the cashier checks. I go tell the wonderful news. I did my little like shimmy shimmy shake. I'm really bad at dancing. Don't ask me to do that again. Like little tears, like she was holding back and I looked at her and I said, it's okay, like you have it, it's good. Like this is, like I'm like, this is great. <laughs> like my face. And she's like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was like, do you need a hug? So I broke all, y'all, I broke all the coronavirus social distancing and I was like, do you need a hug? And she's like, and she comes up and just is like sobbing into my shirt. <sighs> she knew she was gonna have to live in this car, this minivan with her four young boys and her husband and they didn't have a place to live. And it just was so, I was so glad. DocuSign, DocuSign, DocuSign everything. All three of you, even your co-signer. And then we need these checks by first thing in the morning. Um, so I'm feeling really good about myself. I go home, I got my daughter with me. She's fussy, she's hot, I'm giving her a bath. I'm like standing by my computer, standing by my computer, my kid are doing all the things. The listing agent reaches out at like 9.30 and he's like, we don't have any signatures. If, if they're not wanting this property, we need to move on. So I called my client and he had just settled into the hotel because they've been driving all day. It was super stressful. And he's like, I'm in bed and I can't see well on my phone. So I'm just gonna do it tomorrow morning. And I was like, no, homie, figure it out. <laughs> like, urgency, like now, like now. He's like, okay, if you say so. <laughs> I was like, I do say so, bruh, I do. So they got up, him and his wife signed, they called their co-signer, everybody signed. The next morning, I arranged with uh, the wife. She went and got the checks from the bank. I called the landlord, dropped off the checks. The landlord handed me the keys. I was told by the listing agent, don't give the keys until they have everything transferred over to their name. These people don't even know how to transfer utilities. So I had to spend like three hours doing that whole thing. Um, got it done. Y'all, they have a house. I cannot believe it happened. Please no one ever, ever asked me to do that again. Lightning does not strike twice, okay? It don't do it. It doesn't happen. Um, unless you're in the movie Sweet Home Alabama. It was, a, it was a really terrible business decision. Didn't communicate well, uh, anything. Even when I texted and called them, they would take forever to reach back. When I would give them items and tasks to do on an urgent basis, they were very last days ago about it, which like I said, probably like there's not, there's not a connection of how important this is. It is super important, y'all. Um, and we were working on literally like days. I know it was like the 15th through the 30th, but actually it was more like the 27th through the 30th. So it was a really, really bad business decision because when it's all said and down, the way, the way that real estate agents are paid is that you know the listing agent makes an agreement with the landlord. The landlord typically pay, pays one month's rent to pay for the commissions of um, the real estate agents. The listing agent decides how much he's gonna get and then he decides how much I'm gonna get. I'm gonna be really honest with you. I made 25% of 1795. Oh my God, that's almost $500. Um, and then I have a broker split. And then I have a mentor split. And then I have a 35% split with um, Op City because I got the referral. I think I'm gonna go buy some Bath and Body Works candles. That's probably about as far as my paycheck's gonna go. Um, so I'm in the hole. So it was a bad business decision. By the way, I decided on that transaction that for every single client that I work with, I have decided that no matter what client I take in, no matter what my paycheck will look like, you are going to get 100% of me. Like that's just the realtor I'm gonna be. For me as a real estate agent, I just, I just know that there are a lot of different people to, that, that need what I can do for them. And I can work hard, y'all. I'm not a very good businesswoman. I'm not a very good salesman. I know where my, my, where my weaknesses lie. Um, and that is two of them because my heart is too big. I don't turn people down. If there is some way in which I can help you, even if 
it doesn't even actually result in me getting a commission, which is actually my first deal. This is actually my second deal. My first deal, I didn't get a commission just because I, I worked with people and we had to do second chance housing and I don't get a commission for that. Um, but I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I helped these people. And guess what my reward is for helping these people? They gave me a referral. They have a, a friend that is um, fleeing the country that the dictator is like apparently like chopping off people's heads because he's a journalist and that's just what they do over there. And uh, they're like, he needs a property in the same area. I said, okay, what's the time frame? And they're like, right after us. Y'all, that's like next week. <laughs> but I'm gonna do it. Not because I'm desperate. Maybe because I'm a little bit desperate, but mostly because I know that my unique set of skills is um, having a big enough heart to push through and provide just excellence for everyone. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're a million dollar listing and if it doesn't matter if, if you're looking for a $2,000 month lease or less, honestly. Like, if I'm your realtor, I got your back. Which also means I'm gonna harass the crap out of you. So you better text me back, you better email me back, you better call me, you better do all things, and you better not be calling other real estate agents at the same time playing me, y'all. This deal showed me what I was made of. I'm pretty proud of it. So I'm gonna go take my little paycheck. Like I said, I'm gonna go buy me some Bath and Body Works candles, maybe a bottle of wine, take a little breather, and we're gonna do this stuff tomorrow. And the next day, and the next day. Hopefully, you know, you see some more videos of me talking about other amazing things that are good things and they're good business decisions. But in the meantime, I guess I'm just going to be a really bad businesswoman. <laughs> all right, y'all. Thanks for watching. These doggies are lazy and sorry with all their licking, but um, thanks for coming around. I'll talk to you later.